Center. Getting to pick up boys and girls at the Old Village Center. It's uh, a little after six o'clock, about 6.04 in the morning. And uh, we'll put some clips together for you. It should be a pretty interesting ride. On this ride, I left Northampton, rode into the woodlands, picked up the group at the Alden Village Center, we headed out on Fish Creek Boulevard, all the way to Capitol Hill, Raven Chapel, Mill Route, the 2854. By the time we got to Taco, it was raining real heavily. Half of the group turned back around. We continued through the forest all the way to 149. Came back on Bethel Road, down back into Montgomery. Went through downtown Montgomery and took Spring Branch, to Keenan cut off. We stopped at a store there in Keenan and then came back through the neighborhood. Grand Lake Estates, Honia Egypt Road, into the woodlands. We the road was the roads were messy, but we didn't really get a lot of heavy rain. We just kinda dealt with the crap from the rain that had happened before we got there. area where you guys encountered that dog dog hasn't been there and then they've paved it it's and nice supposedly the bridge was out for a bit after the storm so they routed cars there and they tore up the road so that entire downhill new asphalt right? that section so we'll do that go to 149 go right then take bethel and come straight down 1097 back to 149 and then go through the neighborhood the historic neighborhood uh, Spring Branch, and we stop at Keenan at the store, and it comes back to the neighborhood. That's the route. We're discussing the route. Okay, cool. guys, let's roll. We're on research forest here. Spinning. So I'm going to be changing the time start, the ride start to 7 a.m. Uh, Laura did that for the ride that she's temporarily hosting because it gets uh, light. <laughs> later now at almost seven plus uh those of us who are riding in we leave now at six instead of five thirty i'm about 35 minutes from the ride start but i give myself 45 minutes to an hour just in case By the time we get the taco on this ride, the weather is misty, rain, you know, light rain, but then gray, and it just looks like the sun had departed us. And so some uh, the group split in half. Some of the guys came back, but we continued. And so the, it, it wasn't raining, but the rain had already occurred, so the roads were kind of wet. But it, it worked out. It ended up being a very, very nice Ride. There's a guy named Steve Swallow, I believe. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He just got back into riding after a surgery on his Achilles, I think. He's had a problem with it, he said, most of his adult life from the time he was a teenager, just been putting it off. And he finally decided to get it taken care of. So he's trying to get back in shape. So he rode with us as far as Taco and then came back with the other guys. So Paul Ilonga is on the camera. Last week's filming was just awesome. I enjoyed it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I hear We're heading it. towards Egypt Lane, and I hear ching 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 coming from Laura's brakes. The disc brakes. We rode in the rain on Thursday. We got caught in the rain, and I think the debris, the little grit, was still in the brake pads. It was intermittent, and that means from time to time I would hear it. That's why I asked Paul, "Did you hear Paul?" And we could hear it. And then throughout the ride later in the day, as we went through wet roads and stuff, she and Mike, who also has discs, you could hear the. The, the grip from the road rubbing on the pads. So I thought of pulling the driveway so we could check. Well, we pull in the driveway, we spin the wheel, it was fine. So that's another thing with disc brakes. When you ride in the rain, they pick up the grip from the road and it fills that little space. But you know, the tolerances are very close. And it fills out the space and that's what was happening. At the point, I, here we did not know. When we, she pulled in there, I wanted to make sure and we didn't hear anything. We couldn't replicate the problem. <laughs> Let me hold your bike, man. So Paul's gonna hold my bike. I want to pick up her bike and spin the wheel. It sounded like the rear, but then it's quiet. It's quiet. That's yeah. So it's got me pumped. Yeah. It's like as if it's between gears or something. Uh, the disc, the gear is quiet. Yeah, it's uh, the, the the disc has some grit in there because during the ride, the same thing happened to Michael's bike on a particular climb. Yeah, yeah, it just started and then it stopped. So, so when you ride in the rain with your discs, you gotta spray some water in between the pads and the disc to kind of holds all the the little grit, the sand and stuff. That's what it sounded like. So, <laughs> we couldn't figure that out, but that's something new we figured out, you know. So, riding in the rain, the the, di the dirt off the road. And this is the thing that, that surprised me because rim brakes have the same problem. The, the rims get dirty, and you got to scrub off the debris to increase your stopping power. So, the first few times when it gets wet and you brake, you want to brake to where you kind of dry the rims a little bit. But I figured the discs would not be, you know, in the same frame, so to speak, meaning that they're not on the rim, they're smaller, but you know, debris gets on there. So basically what it was sounding like was a film of grit was between the pads and the rotor. You could hear it, just kind of a ching, 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 you know, like it's, and it wasn't rubbing, so. So it went away when we stopped. And then throughout the ride, it would intermittently do that. And we, we f figured out that it was the, especially when it started to rain. They're very finicky. In fact, Laura's bringing her bike to the shop because we, we tightened the headset and she's just had a, 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 a tough time with this with the bike that she has, a Savello. And the headset just keeps coming loose. And we checked everything. I mean, the most recent time she brought it, the steer or two was too long. We put a spacer to take care of that. I did not expect it to get loose in two weeks. It's been a little over a week after we tightened everything, so I kind of want to get to the bottom of what's going on. I don't believe it's the bearings, so they were in excellent condition. So I gotta do some research on that particular model that she has. It's one of the lightest Savellos they make. Really nice bike, but she's just had different issues with the steer tube and different things. So I'll try to get to the bottom of it. And then on the last ride, the the clear coat started bubbling on her frame. I'm like, really? I, you know, the, the water got somehow got under the paint. I don't know. It's just strange. The good thing is it's carbon, so you could just sand that area and paint it. I'm gonna go push the button. There's no car behind us. Push the pedestrian crosswalk button. So we're gonna be leaving at seven. I'm gonna make the change and announce it about a day before I post the ride so people can get used to that. Because at seven, it's the sun's coming out. So I pushed the pedestrian signal. Paul is asking Laura if she's still hearing the noise. 
Green up. So there's only four of us continued. Uh, Michael, who's in front, myself, Laura, and Paulie Longa finished the route. The rest of the people turned around. The rain uh, deterred them, and you know, so they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna head back in." Stop, my brother. It stopped. Yeah, it stopped. It stopped as mysteriously as it started. Shit. Yeah, it's not doing it. Yeah, we talk about it. We talk about the noise on her rear disc because I was riding next to her, and I heard it. He heard it. And so, I think it's from Thursday's ride in the rain, some of the debris. Because the, 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 the disc pads are very close to those rotors on disc brakes. With small tolerances. Yeah, we didn't have the usual turnout that we have. Mike Barreras is here. I believe we picked him up on the road. I think we already have. On Egypt Lane, I think he was there. So as you ride more over the years, your body may change, your flexibility may, may increase or decrease. You need to pay attention to that. You may need to tweak your fit slightly. You know, we've had to do that over, over the period of time that we've been riding. Whether you move the bar angle or the hoods or whatever. Whenever you have any kind of discomfort. You need to have an open mind. Your fit is dynamic because your body will change. But you have to know what kind of changes you're making and whether they're going to correct whatever issues you may be encountering. Don't guess. And you need to have a record of your current position and what you're changing, where you're going to because you may need to come back if you do too much. We're approaching Fish Creek Boulevard after the next couple of turns. We're going to go straight on Fish Creek. The sun really did not come out until later in the day when we're off camera. I have my shades on the back of my head and it stayed there the entire ride. Hey, my brother. I used the Gorilla Glue like we told me. Fix that sound like no other. Yeah. I was even thinking about we could even put a piece of leather to add it because it's underneath. Yeah, yeah, we didn't need it. Okay. We pulled out from underneath. It came and made it right on the edge of the sea. I've had Gorilla Glue on this more than a year. Yeah, we, uh, when you ride in the rain a lot, some of the saddles that have leather, the leather sometimes get compromised. The, the glue that's holding it can weaken that's what Paul's talking about and over time you know it's always your favorite saddle and so if you can use Gorilla Glue or some other glue and glue it up it will save you some money you don't have to always buy a new saddle some riders will even get their favorite saddle recovered you can take it to a leather shop and they'll recover it and the SMP saddles the frame is so tough that if mine has an issue with the leather, I'll probably get it recovered. I don't care about the branding. I just like the shape. Because they're solid. The chromoly rails are tough. We're on Fish Creek Boulevard. We're on the open road. The FM 2978. This section is called Sendera Ranch Road. As soon as we get on this road, everybody get a slice of adrenaline and the speeds just pick up. <laughs> 
this ride was so much steadier uh, you will see as we approach the overpass uh, one of the riders in front of me he went really hard until he was doing like an interval then he wanted to sit up you will see me just ride by and carry the train no, it wasn't, you know, just because you're done with your interval doesn't mean the group's going to sit up with you. We just kept going. You need to slip back in. So that's the thing we talked about in the last film where I said, make sure you have something left to get back in line. On the way back, it's off camera. <laughs> we went through Spring Branch, and there's an area where I have these dogs that I harass. After we pass that area, one more climb. Laura just, Laura's wheel just started pulling away from me, and she was just riding. But it was like I had to like dig to stay on that wheel. And I was thinking about, it, I was like, man. So when we got back, I posted on our board. I was like, we call her the pirate. I said the pirate was trying to kill me <laughs> today. So that wheel will not hold still. She rides like Pantani. Every time the road goes up, she flattens the hills. I mean, she just lowers her body and the bike just starts to pull away. I'm not sure that's why what's causing her fork to keep coming loose. <laughs> you know, because we follow textbook tightening and everything and it's perfect. And then after two weeks, it comes loose. So something is inherently wrong. I got to figure it out. Is one of these fancy uh, carbon stems, and there, are, there's no um, crown race. The, the The carbon is carved with like a built-in shape to, to be a crown race. There's no crown race added, and when you put it in, it, it's nice and flush and everything. But it's not holding, regardless of what we do. It's like it seems to be loosening on its own, and it has cre it had created a problem where. There was a ring, a groove being formed on the steerer tube. She had gotten that replaced on a warranty before. And then lately though, Savella would not honor the warranty even though it's happened to her on several bikes multiple times. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, I've never seen that issue before, you know, it's just almost like, uh, but it is a problem because I went online a while back when she, when she was initially telling me about the problem and I found a group on Reddit where a lot of people are encountering these issues with the, the groove being worked into the fork, the carbon. It's like the, the, the little wedge is creating a groove, the wedge that holds the bearings in place is creating a groove on, the, on some Savello Road forks. Got to do some more research and get to the bottom of this because it, it, it's, it's got me puzzled. And I don't like things that puzzle me. I like to figure stuff out. That's the way I'm wired. The light is red. I do. It's a sh pretty short light. Should change by the time we get up there. So this part of this road, I'm not sure where Fish Creek begins. I think it's around here. I'll have to look. Let's look on the map on the right. Yeah, this is Fish Creek. You see on the map on the right, in the overlay, Fish Creek. So Sendera Ranch has ended. When you cross that bridge, I think it becomes Fish Creek. So Laura was pulling. I believe. Yeah. yeah, Laura was pulling. So Mike Brad Bradbury is pulling right now. And that's Roy on his wheel. It 
was actually nice on this ride to see <laughs> Mike Bradbury riding steadily. We went through the forest. He took some long pulls. And when he pulled off, I told him, good work. And then later in the ride, I thought, well, you know, it's good that uh, it was good that you were riding so steady today. He said, it's very difficult for him to ride steady, especially when the road goes up. You know, he's a light rider. He prefers climbs, I guess. And so we kind of laughed about it. But I told him it was kind of nice. It, it, it wasn't an easy pace, but it was steady. So we ended up with a very good average. We averaged, I believe, well, I don't have to do it self-average because I, I warm up and I cool down. But overall, my average was 28 kilometers an hour. And with, in these conditions, that was pretty good. Even Strava said, oh, it's one of your faster rides. So we, we had probably, we probably averaged at least maybe 18 and a half, 19 miles an hour with the group. So the, the group is faster because the terrain we're going in, you can see the route up there. It's not flat. We have one section where we're doing seven plus percent. After this ride, um, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, I took the day off, just kind of rested. I was actually going to try to ride on Monday, today, Memorial Day, Labor Day, I'm sorry, Labor Day. And I got up and I just didn't feel it. It was like my out the door was like nil, because usually on Mondays I rest. It's Sunday that I will ride, you know, three, four, three to four hours. So I just took another day off, used the day to run errands, do other stuff, get it out of the way so my week will be free. So tomorrow I'm going to be joining the Romeo group. We're actually going to come out this way. Which is unusual for them. It was good to see that route. Riding 22, 23, and this road is a slight grade. It's a false flat. Every time you're going north, and then the wind, you can hear it. It's a good effort. As we approach this light, it went yellow. When Michael hit the intersection, it was yellow. We're already there. We just continue as a truck. This is a new light that they added as the growth has occurred. They've got more shopping centers. To put a light here, it was harder for these people to get across traffic. So Mike pulled off, and Roy takes over. I just stay in the same gear. You can see my cadence is below 70. I'm just turning the gear. I think I'm in a 15, like a 53, 15, or something like that. Up this steady group pace. We're just rolling like a train. Polly Longa and Laura are both in black today. I must have missed the memo. It's a perfect day to wear black because the sun didn't come out <laughs> much. <laughs> All these clouds. The 
the road's going up. You see the watts going up. I'm using a larger gear than I normally use because I really wanted to stress my legs. Ridgely Shores in a little bit at the intersection it kicks up to around 3% you really feel it, it's short you know but you feel it See the watts are going up. It says 3.6. I didn't realize it was that much. But once we get through the light, it levels off. So this is a different kind of group riding than a group ride where you have a lot of attacks, surges, it's different. So if you do well in a ride like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will also like the one where the, the changes are, like a lot of attacks or so forth. So depending on the kind of riding you wanna do, you gotta prepare yourself in training to acclimate to the ones that have a lot of changes in speed especially if you're going to do road racing competition if you're not doing road racing competition then it's not that much of an issue but there are some groups where they ride like it's a road race you've seen some of our rides it has a lot to do with who shows up and time of year as i always say but uh the steady ride is different the surge is different you know so when you have a lot of surges like we call them intervals you got to prepare yourself for that kind of riding if the group you're with rides like that all the time there's nothing wrong with steady rides if it's fast it's fast i mean a strong if you're a strong time trial is and you can stay near threshold or whatever you should be able to handle changes in speed and so forth within reason but the point i'm making is you have to be able to do this kind of riding the other kind if your group does that from time to time that's the way you prepare yourself so you don't limit yourself to one style of riding. Especially if you compete. Uh, mass start events, road races are very, very jumpy. Because they're trying to wear people down and see what shakes out. So if you're in a ride where they're doing a lot of jumps, then you have to keep your cadence high. If it's steady, you can use a moderate cadence. 75, 85, that kind of stuff. When there's a lot of when there are a lot of jumps, you don't want to wear out your legs by lugging a big gear. Or mashing a big gear because you won't have the momentum to react to those instant accelerations. This is a little rise before we get to the overpass.
left. I'm just kind of rolling the big, big gear I'm in. I'm probably in a 15 or a 14, something like that. Just rolling the terrain. The grades are not that drastic here. Since I've, this year, since I started training, I believe it was February or March. So now it's finally at the point where it doesn't take much effort to roll these gears. So I'm enjoying that. But I missed a big chunk of training earlier in the year. I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. <laughs> if life permits. Sometimes you plan and then life happens. So right here he starts to go harder than he'd been going. I'm seated above 600 watts just to stay on his wheel. You can see we put a gap on Paul a little bit. Paul's going to ride back. He's leveling off. But it was a surprise to myself and to Paul and everybody else. He changed his piece so drastically. Which made it clear to me that he was doing something he could not sustain. I could tell by his body language. Right there he's going to sit up. I'm just going to keep riding. I'm going to continue what he was doing. And Paul sees. He knows what I'm doing. So he just comes up and we just keep the train moving. Everyone up at least 10 beats up there, the 600 some watts sitting. is picking up the road has leveled off i'm keeping the effort about the same you see my heart rate staying around 160 thereabouts so you can't do it by speed you got to do it by out of your rate of perceived exertion rpe or power watts you know watts helps because we're on that climb at 600 some watts that's not what we're doing back there so 250 to 300 watts seems about reasonable and i'm just going by how it, just how it felt and that's what we're doing here we're gonna be turning soon you're gonna see me move over i'm trying to look back because it's so cloudy i can't see too well with my mirror i'm gonna swing by then i'm gonna do it again because in the last car i didn't really see till the last minute Right there, I'm gonna swing back. There we go, I see the guy. <laughs> and then I'm coming. <laughs> I'm looking around the group. I moved out to look to make sure it was clear. I probably stood here, I think. Yeah, that's a big lip there. I don't like to sit on those. And this road goes up, so I stand. to keep the bike rolling that's the way your bike should sound quiet that means everything's tuned I just like to hear my tires I think I've got the GP 5000 on this one they're good tires they're good all around tires just like the 4000S is it's still out there a few copies you know not make them anymore but some vendors have them. i like those tires good all-around tires training and big group rides of racing or whatever it is you can i stand again i let them know cars up i stand for two reasons the road's very choppy here so i stay on the right rolling the gear using my hamstrings to pull there's somebody talking here so i bring the group away from that guy i wouldn't be standing on that's such a narrow road standing there chat but it's quiet you know they live here their homes are right there there's a car on the right i'm gonna point to him let him know he's make sure he sees us because we're going pretty fast 26 miles an hour something like that 
the effort's not high because we're going downhill. I'm just just rolling the gear. I'm pulling on an effort to where if somebody were to come and accelerate, I can still accelerate. That's why you see me staying up here as long as I have been. I am not riding outside of myself, so to speak. Uh, this is like sweet spot almost. I'm going to continually downshift as we get closer here. The road keeps going up 2%, whatever. And then I win. And so I downshift to, to stay on top of whatever gear I'm in. Keep the watts up. We're going to be turning right. I'm going to go to the left of the road so I can look for traffic to make sure I have enough room. Because when you turn, it's a grade. Nothing's coming. So I downshift. Since I'm seated, see 400 watts initially. Nice leveling off. It's a slight grade here. Just a slight grade. Mike comes, I just go ahead and lift my pace and get on this wheel. So that's how you give somebody a wheel. Mike is not attacking the group. Mike came up to take a pull and he just kind of slipped in front of me. I just got on this wheel. I didn't have to do much. Very close on Michael's wheel because he stays really low and he's smaller than I am, so I've got to make sure I maximize the draft. But the effort is the same that we we're doing up there when I even when I came over the overpass 160 ish. I've got to do some investigation into why Laura Savello is continually having loose headset. Because the symptoms are odd. Those are the kind of things I like to tackle. It's clear. When we go through that intersection, this is a slight grade at one point something, well, point four. You feel it. Or anything. The 
after this slight descent, the road's gonna kick up in the distance. You'll see it in a little bit if you get a good enough shot. See that? The hill is beginning. You see the watts going on. It's one of the hills I like actually. It continues to go up, but it, it's it's more predictable. It favors my characteristic, meaning it's more of a ramp than a wall, if that makes sense. It's very gradual. See, 3.94, then it might, and then it's at 3.53. I don't know if it goes back up or not. It stays, it stays 3.2. I'm looking at the display. But something about it now, right here, it starts to go down. That's two, is one is leveling off. It's it's long, it's long enough to where you're working, but it's not that drastic. 3.5 at the steepest pitch, so it probably averages maybe two and a half percent. You can roll a big gear of those things, so us big boys can handle that. It's the nine, ten percent stuff you gotta really work. This one's a little sprint, so I stand. Mike stands too. So we're going to be turning right. And I see, I'm not wearing my glasses. I see immediately, see all these spots? Little wet spots? Thunder showers, isolated. So we got dry and wet. Very dangerous. So I let everybody know. Slow down. You see, Michael even put his hand out. He's going to say, He's gonna push down towards the pavement, like take it easy. You see what I'm doing? Tell everybody, take it easy. One of the riders almost caught it. I didn't know, but Mike Bereras was telling us somebody almost fell. That's what we looked back because we heard something. So he fishtailed. But he got it back. All these showers, see little spots, dry, wet, you know, that's what messes. That's what Mike's laughing. He said, I'll wake you up in the morning. So the, some rider almost fell. His bike kind of fishtailed on him. And so I was about ready to take a pull. I think Mike Barreras is going to come and pass me. I'm going to get on his wheel. I think Roy was the one. Uh, some, he, he probably went through the corner just, and then maybe he hit a break, hit the brakes or something. He almost ended up, but he he, he got it back. He he controlled it, so that was good. It's these kind of pavements where you got a little bit of moisture. It's not heavy rain. You know, the oils from the road come to the surface. They're slick. So when you have light rain, be extra cautious. When it rains very heavily, it washes the road. Then they're not as slick. It's not as slick anymore. And that's what we encountered after I left the group when we got into the woodlands between the woodlands and my house. Man, the skies opened up. It was actually I, I actually enjoyed it because it was warm and just heavy rain. This is the bike that Laura's riding that keeps coming loose. And, and that's uncharacteristic. I mean, we're following all the rules of how to tighten it. The symptoms are great. You tighten it, it's tight. It's, it's, you know, it moves nicely, you know, preloaded properly, all that kind of stuff. And so it's it's bugging me that two weeks later it's loose again. I'm like, what the heck? So I'm going to start by just looking at the bearings, but I'm going to go to some of the Savella forums and see if people have encountered this problem. It's very unusual. And she likes her bike. I like it too. It's a nice lightweight bike. My wife is giving her all these little issues. And then the clear coat, a little bit of road in the rain, the clear coat bubbled up. The water got under it. Yeah, the road is slick here. Yeah. We slowed down. See how it's shiny? There's just enough water to just bring the oils up. It doesn't clean the road. And that's when you can fall. So we slowed way down. So when you're riding like that and you have a drizzle and light rain and stuff like that, back off in the corners. Keep your bike straight. You go over metal like 
real crossings keep your bike straight because those the metal pieces they're like ice when water's on them the metal and water and then the rubber and your tires they don't get along so don't do any turns on sewer covers and all that kind of stuff the manhole covers don't do any turns on those they're slippery they're good if you just go straight so respect metal surfaces that wet metal surfaces and your tires they're not friends and then the white lines don't turn on them they're slick because they actually use a very thick paint for that white line is almost like some kind of epoxy so it's it's just slippery when water's on it even even vehicles will spin out when they try to take off especially the trucks uh, pickup trucks they don't have a lot of weight on the back it will spin i think i'm sitting at the front we're going slower and slower i think the guys are gonna oh, okay i pulled off It's funny about this sport is that you'll be riding, I mean, we do it for so long, you know, five, six hours, whatever. But whatever your event is, it's funny how you go through periods of time where you, you feel great. And then all of a sudden, eh, you're like, oh, a spot of bottom. And I always remember one of the guys in the area, Jerry. And I may have mentioned it before. We're standing at Taco one day. Ever I was talking about what had happened on prior rides. And Jerry said, yeah, I was, I was with the group and we were just going. I was riding well until I wasn't. <laughs> and he described it so well because that's how it is. It's like you've been going good. And all of a sudden, they're like, well, what's going on? You know, that's, that's you know, it's hard to know from day to day, even like Le Mans, you know, when he, he was in the tour, he'd get interviewed after a stage that he did well in. And, uh, you know, tomorrow's stage is in the mountain. And what do you think? And he said, well, I'll, I'll see how my legs feel. <laughs> and you always would say that. I will see if I have the legs. I will see how my legs will feel because it's like from day to day, you never know. Especially, you know, three week event. That's a long period of time. It favors those who recover quickly. You know, you got to have the first the engine in the first place. It takes a big engine to recover quickly. But uh, he never said, I'm going to do this. I mean, he believed in himself, but he was always like, well, let's see how my legs are going. <laughs> you know, especially when he's talking to reporters, which made sense. I think he said the 85 or the 86 tour, both of those he said he never had a bad day. The 86 tour was the first one he won, Le Mans. And the 85 tour was when they tricked him into waiting for the Baja. You know, the team was like, please. That's the water droplets on the camera making the light. <laughs> Laura's light do that. That's cool. So it's after this area, we're going to hit the highway and these guys will go through the puddle and I'm like, enough. We're getting sprayed, the road's wet and we're already getting sprayed, but it's not that bad. But still, you get that grit, you know, you, some of it gets in your mouth, I'm like, man, you spit it out. But then we ran around a turn, the guy hit a puddle and just got out of my face. I'm like, ah. Even when I competed, I hated it, but you know, in a race, you got bigger things you're going for. It's just a ride here, it's like it's different. I don't mind the rain, it's the spray. Yeah, we didn't expect it to rain. 25% chance of rain, might as well be 100%. Then they keep changing the stuff on the phone. The stuff on the phone's been wrong lately, the weather stuff. We're approaching 2854, the FM 2854. We're gonna turn right. I'm gonna pull out the line like, I'm just gonna ride in. I end up catching up with them at the light. We ride together to Taco Point. But I hate riding in the rain in large, in groups, because you just get dirty, period. I, I'll ride in the rain by myself, and definitely, preferably with my mud guards on, because it keeps me drier and cleaner, definitely. In fact, after this ride, I put them on the bike, but I just didn't go out Saturday or Sunday. 
I mean Sunday or Monday because we've been having these little showers. I don't mind the rain. Just I'd much rather do it by myself. Yeah. Or with Paul who has uh, mud guards. So right there, I pulled out. I was like, I told him I waved them up. Go ahead. I said, I'm, I'm not following the wheels. They hit the puddle on the corner there and just sprayed me in the face. And I was like, you know, I'm not even wearing my glasses or anything. I didn't need sand getting in my eyes. So I pulled out of the line. I want to wave Mike up. I haven't pulled out yet. I think I'm about to pull out of the line. We've got a little bit of a gap on these guys. I think this is where I pulled to the right and wave him up. I'm going to stay out of the wheels. Right here. I'm letting him you go ahead and go. That stuff all in my face. I'm wiping off. I said, I thought I pulled out. I said, I'm not riding. I'm not sitting in the wheels. So I decided to just ride in. Then I, I realized that we had a rider, the guy who I was talking about that just had the surgery recently, Steve Swallow, who's trying to get back in, in shape. So he's back there. And then shortly after these guys ride up the road, I see him. So he and I rode up together, and then we catch up with them at the light down the hill. But if I hadn't done that, I'd probably be dirty. It's just, you know, and it's not that bad here. It's just in that corner. The one little puddle, the guy rolls through it. I'm like, you could have avoided that puddle. Like a kid walking me out of stamping in water. That's kind of, I'm telling Laura about it. We laughed about it. So Mike's pulling them back to the three guys. And that's one way you can do your interval. Like you see Mike pull them back to those three guys that had the gap. You could do that and not disrupt your group. So this part of it is not that bad. It's still a little bit of spray. And once I ride in the rain, once I, as soon as I get back, I make sure I start my recovery process, you know, drink something, whatever and get those wet clothes off, get them washed. Don't let them sit because there's a lot of, the water from the road has a lot of, it's just like, it's dirty, it's black. If you ever wash your jersey after you ride in the rain or your shorts in the sink, you'll see what I'm talking about. Don't let them sit and set in your, your nice clothes, your nice uh, kit. Wash them right away and separate them. Don't put the jersey and the shorts in the machine. Put the blacks together, you know, it matters. Separate them. What I usually do is I rinse them off. I have this method detergent. I spray it, put some on them in the sink. I hand wash them first. Get most of that debris out and you literally see fine sand in your sink. That's how much gets into your fabric. And it gets on your saddle too. So after you do that, before your next ride, make sure that bike gets clean. At least the drivetrain and then wipe down the saddle. Get that grit off the leather because it will chew into your leather. Wipe the saddle. I, I wipe the top and I wipe underneath. That's why I don't like to ride in the rain without my mud guards. If the mud guards are there, I don't have to do all of that. They, all of that gets trapped in the mud guards. They don't get up to your saddle. They don't get on your back. It wasn't that bad. It's just that spot. I was like, man, I don't need sand in my eye. This way. So I'm back there holding probably 15 miles an hour. That's probably what you see, 25K. 15, 16, I see Steve's. So I'm waiting for him to get on my wheel. And then we ride in together. And we, we catch these guys in a bit. You see, they, they get caught at the light. And we, we catch up before the light changed. Must be 
good to be here. Mike's looking to make sure there's no car coming. There's a lot of crud there. Oh, this looks like a branch. I don't know where that came from. I don't see nothing else near that. No tree or anything. So you can see this section of the pavement is dry right here. The back there was wet. So we're, we're right behind them. They're, they're coming down the hill. You can see we're doing 40 kilometers an hour. We're, we can see them. And we're doing 23, uh, 26 now. But we're coming down the same hill just maybe 15, 20 seconds behind them. I'd much rather do that and get all the spray in my face. But it, it's, you know, it, it, it's just that uh, I would have preferred to have put my mud guards on because... The cleanup is so much less, and uh, it's just, and I would have covered my shoes. I just, I did not expect it to rain. 20, 25% chance. Uh, and I believe it was supposed to be later in the morning or something like that. So in a little bit, we're gonna catch up to them before the light changes at this intersection. Mike's talking about, you know, with the weather like it is, it's like, uh... Get on the black, you won't be sorry. turning back it's Saturday I gotta get at least five hours he was asking Laura if she cleans her own bike Paul asked her the same question I'm not sure why they're giving the, the pirate a hard time pirate does her own we're here. We're, we're with them. We're in the back of the group right now. It is what it is, Elvis. I was telling Mike I hate the spray. He said, it is what it is. Yeah, but... Well. <laughs> I said, 25% chance of rain. What is this fool? Since I would have geared up. I would have covered my shoes. Makes my cleanup easier. Yeah, the shoe gets a little damp, but not as wet as when you have nothing. And not as dirty. But, you know, just clean up as soon as you get home. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off for hours on end. Clean up. Get some. Get something to eat. Maybe drink a little recovery drink. Clean up right away. Get out of the wet clothes and clean them so that the dirt doesn't set in. Because the dirt off the pavement, the water has just got this black suit in it. So I hand wash everything. Make sure they're nice and clean, especially the the tail end of the jersey that the spray gets on. Get all of that off. So we're sitting on the back here, right on the back. We're, we're all riding in together, 18 miles an hour. And it's getting grayer and grayer. It actually looks more menacing than the camera is representing. There is no sun and uh, there's wind. There's, you can see the camera filling up, the rain's picking up as we approach Taco Corner. But it was very deceiving because once we left Aqua Corner to go north, it was dry, you know, relatively.
we're climbing at about 17, 18 miles an hour. The wind's blowing. The rain's spattering. It's just like, it's getting kind of gloomy gray. I ended up telling Micah, I said, you must feel right at home. My, my mic from across the pond. <laughs> you know, it rains there a lot. And he said, yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we call him English Mike. Because we have many mics in a group. A San Diego mic, English mic. So the two mics are together. San Diego mic is following English mic right now. I believe, yes. Car back. Car back. Close it up so the car can go by. I appreciate that. That's what I'm talking about. It's the ones when you say car back that don't react. We're, we're saying car back so that you know, you know, it's got somebody's trying to get by. So because it's, it's raining, Paul knows periodically to kind of wipe the lens. You know, I usually spray uh, a Rain X on the lens. It helps. It's been a long time since we've done a rainy ride. But yeah, riding in the rain is fun if you're by yourself or if you're with other riders that have fenders of mud guards, whatever you call it, wherever you live. It makes a big difference. You don't have that spray. And then you guys can really ride. And they, the, the front mud guard will keep the water off your shoes. I think I'm on the left there in this turn. I'm actually so moving up. Do you take your bike to be clean or do you clean it yourself? <laughs> so that's what that guy asked her at the corner. I guess Paul didn't hear it. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's what his name I think his name is Jorge. He asked her the same question. Do you clean it yourself? Yeah, she cleaned it by herself. I think no bike. There's no bike wash. I think he said car wash. Paul was probably pulling her chain. <laughs> so I don't know what you did this Saturday but this is part of what we did on Saturday so irrespective of the weather we still managed to get in excess of five hours in I mean just it ended up being just a, an awesome ride I, I died a thousand deaths trying to follow the pirate <laughs> but I made it yeah, I made it home it was fun There you go. I'm That's talking right. about it. This is where it just we, it just started to rain as we approached Taco Corner, and because of this downpour right here, look at the road. Half of the group decided to head back. So there were eight of us. Four of us continued. Four of us headed back. Actually, I there were nine. Five headed back. And, uh, yeah. hot, hot. <laughs> so remember. Yeah. Get your K's in and see how the concrete ooh, shiny ooh, ooh. is slippery. You got to keep your bike straight. Get your K's in and keep all the doctors fired. Load it up. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This really sucks. I just cleaned my bike. <laughs> Clean it again. Clean it again. That was the Novena. Too many coaches. So many 